I'm the cosmic pirate searching the universe for math stars. Are you a math star? All right. Okay, fun with filters. Ha ha. All right. All right. So let's see here. I could talk pirates all day, but um, I just got to get a quick, shorter video. The last video I already did um, notes to talk about same sign rule, different sign rule. And I just want to reinforce it and have it at the beginning of each sample problem video um, to help remind you. So you just, the more you hear it, and, and we basically just started working on it for like three teach days. Um, if you did invest some time in it on past Thursday, when I gave you an assignment to go do positive and negative stuff, then you might have a head start. So just as a reminder, instead of writing the notes again, let's take a look at what I wrote in the last video, adding and subtracting fractions. Because today we're gonna, and before that we did adding and subtracting decimals. Today we're gonna be doing adding and subtracting rational numbers, or I sometimes call them adding and subtracting rats. Uh, I say rats just because if you had to write rational throughout the entire year, um, you know, a lot of industries, they like to abbreviate a little bit, like convert FDP. Um, that means converting fractions, decimals, and percents. Um, rat numbers, uh, rather than write rational a million times this year, <clears throat> I'll save some letters and some time. All right, so let's look at the rat numbers. Anyway, um, rat, rational numbers include... Uh, positive whole numbers and their opposites, those are called integers. Positive and negative numbers, like a three or a negative seven, okay, and zero, and zero, I did and zero, and zero, um, but also fractions and decimals, positive and negative fractions and decimals. So we just did a video on adding and subtracting positive and negative decimals and adding and subtracting positive and negative fractions. So now, that does share the screen. Thank you, technology, for being so awesome. So here we go. Um, these are like to be a little bigger. So I can see a little, oh, wrong one. So I can see a little better with my one good eye. I am watching you kids. Always watching. I can usually do raws pretty good, but I've um, made a lot of videos this week, so I'm a little hoarse. All right, <clears throat> raws from Monsters, Inc. You know who I'm talking about watching always watching all right you know the nice thing about this get up too is uh covers the shiny top of my head <laughs> so i'll wear that all right so adding and subtracting positive and negative fractions was the last video this applies to integers and also decimals i just did a review of the same sign rule and the different sign rule and in the same sign rule we're just finding the sum you, you have the same sign so you just add them and that's your total okay but you keep the same symbol so if you have some positives and you add some more positives you have more positives if you have some negatives and you add some more negatives you have more negatives and i try to talk about the word situation okay because uh, a number of people would say well sir that's not a negative three that's minus a positive three so you could physically type it like this we would never normally say it or see it that way but that's the way some people see it in their mind. That's not a negative three, that's a minus three. And I jokingly tell kids and when they ask me, was that a negative three or a positive three? What do you want it to be? What helps you understand the situation better? Um, so you can use a strategy called keep change opposite if you want. And if you don't like seeing, if you think this is a different sign rule because that's a positive three, when we say same sign rule, that, that was already called a strategy, but it really probably should be called same sign situation. I have a couple of times jokingly said, it's the same sign situation. It's an old song, but a good one. All right, anyway, that's not what the song's called. It changed the words. Um, you can take and keep the first number, change it from minus to plus, subtraction from addition to addition, and do the opposite of what you had in your head there. That's a positive three if you look over here. And you do the opposite of that and make it a negative three. Now you can better see and understand me mateys that those are the same signs. It's a negative two and a negative three. Or if you think of it as situation, I'm starting with negative two and I'm either gonna subtract something or I'm gonna add more negatives. Either way, not good. It's getting more negative. So it's the same sign rule. You add them and keep the same sign. So two plus two is five. You know that, why is it positive five? Because the two and three are positive. Well, if you have negative two minus three or negative two plus a negative three, 
it's the same sign. You have a negative number and a negative situation. So you're just getting more negative. It's just getting more negative up in here, y'all. So that becomes negative five, all right? Then the different sign rule, you take the large, and then again, if you get confused by this and you're like, well, they're the same sign, it's a positive two and a positive three. Okay, so you can use the keep change opposite strategy if you want to understand it better and see that they're different symbols, different situations. I have $2, somebody wants three of my dollars. <laughs> that's not helping me, that's getting worse. And now I might be using that money to buy something, okay. But I, as far as my money's balance, it's going from positive and I'm losing some of it. And I'm actually gonna go negative here, okay. So you can do keep change opposite and get keep the two, change the minus or subtract to plus um, addition and do the opposite of the positive three and change it to a negative three. Now you can see it's different sign. You can better understand it's a different sign. Okay, and in a different sign rule, you just gotta find the difference between the two numbers. So if you have um, 10 negative people and five positive people, unfortunately, there's probably gonna be more negative situation if you wanna hang around there, okay? Now they're not, you know, people aren't exactly equal in their amount of positivity and negativity. I'm just using it as a fun example that people can relate to. A lot of times, the middle school kids last year when I taught, they better understood that situation than me talking about money all the time. Us adults, we make money, we spend money, we have to budget money, everything costs money, everything. <laughs> it seems like everything. Um, don't waste that Kleenex, you know. Why'd you use a paper plate? And you could wash a regular, everything costs money. So um, I started saying, uh, you could look at the problem and say, if there's two positive people at a lunch table and three negative people come along, what's that table gonna be like? It's probably gonna be more negative. You have more negatives, okay? So that's the symbol that wins. You keep the larger digit symbol in the answer, okay? So the largest digit three, without looking at the symbols, the three is bigger than the two. So the three is gonna win. But unfortunately, they're subtracting the three or it's adding a negative three, whichever way you wanna look at it. So it's gonna be more negative, so my answer has to be negative. So same sign, sum, different sign, difference. And I jokingly did in class a couple of times, I said, you know, throughout the year, I could say, how many times can you say that fast? Same sign, sum, different sign, difference. Same sign, sum, different sign, difference. Um, just as a joke, but if you remember difference is the answer to a subtraction problem, then you remember, okay, I just gotta subtract them. And how do we prefer to subtract? Biggest number minus the smallest number. But I just gotta remember and know that I keep the symbol from the largest number. If I have more negatives, I'm gonna have a negative answer. If I have more positives, I'm gonna have a positive answer. All right. Now with fractions, you have to do least common denominators. With decimals, you have to line them up for adding and subtracting, okay? Oh, my head's disappearing when I put my, all right. Okay, let's move on. Here we go. We're going to, if you haven't heard, guys, IXL, love it. No, I'm not getting paid to say anything about IXL or other things like web paint. Maybe someday I'll look into that. But I, I do like, and a lot of us teachers really love IXL because it gives you the corrections if you miss it. So you guys already know this stuff, so let me move on. Um, so we star them, that means we want you to do those, okay? So let's add and subtract rational numbers. And I'm gonna use my web paint tool and we'll do some of them. So it's gonna mix up some problems doing decimals and some problems doing fractions. And then towards the end um, is gonna be some decimals and fractions mixed together possibly. You need to know how to convert. Um, we'll see, maybe they won't do the convert here. Let's, but that's why I like to do these. Because um, you could literally have negative 8.9 plus two and one over two. That would be two and a half. But they've already been nice and converted to decimal for you. So if we're lucky, even in the challenge level, they'll all be decimals or they'll all be fractions but you're actually gonna to have to know how to convert them if they give you one decimal and one fraction. It's up to you. Do you wanna convert them both to fractions or do you wanna convert them both to decimals? Now, a lot of times, if they give you easy fractions, you'll be able to see that and go the fraction way, but overall for the year, most of the time, it's easier to convert them to decimals. And you'll see that over time. We'll talk about that later. Okay, let me get my trusty web paint and red just is such a negative number, negative color let's try to go with blue okay so we're going to line these up i'm going to zoom in a touch we'll do a couple skip a level do a couple skip a level and we'll be to challenge in no time here we go so this is what sign rule same sign rule different sign rule well i have a negative number and a positive situation that's a different sign rule 
So you take the biggest digit, subtract the smaller digit, okay? Because we want to find difference, sign difference. We want to find the difference. 9 minus 5 is 4. Drop the decimal down. 8 minus 2 is 6. That's my difference. Now, which one wins? 8's bigger, so its symbol wins. So I'm going to make it negative, okay? Negative 6.4. 6.4. All right, you've got it. Way to go. Good job. All right, so now we're doing fractions, and they're nice. This is introductory problem. They're giving us the same denominator, okay? So all I got to do is add or subtract the tops. But whether you look at that as plus a minus, or you want to say keep change opposite and say minus an, um, a positive number, okay? Either way, this is a negative situation, whether we're subtracting or we have a negative number. Either or, it's a negative situation. This is a positive situation over here. So it's going to be different sign rule, okay? So I basically have 4 is the bigger digit, minus 1 is the smaller digit, and I'm going to have a 3. So that's going to be my numerator, guys. And, and I already know my bottoms are going to have to be 5, okay? So I'm going to have a 3. And then what symbol am I going to have? Well, 4 is the biggest digit, so its symbol wins. So I'm going to have negative three-fifths, okay? All right, hopefully this is beginning to make a little more sense and st sticking a little bit, okay? Clear. All right, so I'll do this one and then we're going to the next level. This is, this is interesting. In, in IXL, they put a little small slash near the top of the number. That's to signify that that's a negative 7.1, but now they're subtracting a negative. How do you subtract a negative? Um, did I put that on there? Oh, no. So double negatives in the last lesson, when we saw a double negative problem I talked about, it. I'll just mention it briefly. Okay, so a double negative, like in the English language, if I said, I'll just do it real quick, don't not eat your dinner. You know, uh, I as a parent or whatever, I am wanting you. I'm a math teacher. Shh. Okay. Don't not eat your diner. No, don't not eat your dinner, okay? I'm doing that for effect to remind you. I want you to eat your dinner. Don't get any, you're starting to get on your phone. You're talking to your friend about playing the game or whatever because everything's done for the night and you're ready to go play. Don't not eat your dinner. You need to go sit down and eat your dinner first, okay, before you even get started and disappear for three hours. Ha ha, whatever, okay? Okay, so that's a double negative. It's not proper English. We're not supposed to say those things, but people will on occasion say things like that for effect. It, it, don't not do it means they really want you to do it. So it's really positive. They want you to do it, okay? Really, it's positive. Act, I think I said actually also. actually opposite of what said. I wanted to include the word opposite, okay? So in that situation, if you say minus minus 7.1, okay, let me type a couple over here. Um, a lot of times, I'm just going to take the decimal out to make it quicker, okay? Would they say this? No. We would usually say 8 minus in parentheses negative 7, okay? Excel does it where you see it right up above, okay? So really, all three of these mean 8 plus 7, okay? And then the last thing I sometimes say, uh, let me try to, uh, oh, well, I don't know. I was trying to get it to be on the same line. A lot of times, um, you might hear this. And I like to repeat this. Uh, a teacher taught me this when I was a little kid long ago. Okay, I'm going to change colors so you can see one thing and we're done and we're moving on. Draw. The other thing they say instead of don't subtract, do the opposite of minus seven, is they say, well, look, with that parentheses there, it kind of looks like a giant plus sign. Okay, to remind you that you're doing the opposite, you're adding. Okay, so you, if you see that, great, it's a tip to help you catch it, okay? So all we're doing is adding, okay? So I'm gonna do eight 
7.9 plus 7.1. I get 10. Oh, and then it's going to be 7 plus 8 plus 1. It's going to be 16.0. Now you can put 16.0. You should not be in the habit of it. I will do it once just to see if they count it. But we would usually just write 16. I, you know, you don't need to, because then you could say, well, why don't I put another zero, another zero, another zero forever? It's a waste of time and space, okay? But if you did put it, they, they understand. IXL is cool about that, but let's get in the process and habit of just putting 16. Okay, let's move on a level and change color. Oh my gosh, really? So we're not quite halfway, but here they're wanting you to add decimals. They don't have a negative symbol in there. It's the same sign rule. They're both positive, so you're just going to have a bigger positive number. The only trick is if you add them, there is nothing after the five. So you just put a dot, and it doesn't really matter if you have the five on the top or the bottom. A lot of people just always put the first number on top. Some people always put the biggest number on top. It's up to you. You're still adding them. If I say add Tom to Jerry or Jerry to Tom, it's the same thing. I just changed the order, okay? We'll get into that later. That's a whole nother lesson. There's words for all that. Okay, so two plus five is seven. But you didn't even need to write that, sir. I've already fast forwarded on you. Okay, I understand. That one was an easy one. So I'm surprised. That's the way some of these are. They're still pretty easy because they're randomly generating numbers. So here's another one. I don't need, I don't have any negative symbol or anything. Um, so I, you know, you might be able to do some of those in the head. Eight plus six is 14. So 14.9. Okay, here we go. This is more what I want to see. Now we're talking, whoa, how do you, how do you deal with a whole number and a fraction? Okay, well, let me just say if it was nine and one tenth, you would just put them together, nine and one tenth. But now this is a negative one tenth, and this is minus a negative nine. What happens when you have two negatives right next to each other like that? Don't subtract the nine, do the opposite of negative nine, okay? So it's really wanting you to add. It's negative one tenth plus nine, okay? Now I don't have any tenths, okay? So how do you subtract one tenth from nine holes? Well, I need to borrow from one of those holes. So I'm going to change this nine to eight and 10 tenths. Do you see how that 10 tenths is really one whole? 10 divided by 10 is one. And then the one plus the eight is nine, okay? Now I can say different sign rule. I have a positive 10 and I'm gonna subtract this negative one. So I'm still gonna have the eight holes left over and then the positive 10 minus the 1, I'm going to have 9 tenths. Okay? That wasn't so hard. It looked a little confusing, but if you haven't done it for the first time, there you go. Okay, so 8, and put a, let me show you one thing. If I do that, that looks like 89 over 10. You have to put a space between the whole number and the fraction. Okay? Boom. All right. Do one more at this level and we'll skip, okay? All right, so I can do two things here, guys. These are all negative and these are positive, but they're telling me subtract it. I want to do two things here, okay? Um, first of all, we just did this. Minus a negative is don't subtract or do the opposite of negative nine, okay? So it's really going to be a positive. So I really have six and three tenths and I have nine and one tenth. They're being nice because I got the same denominator. Six plus nine is 15 and a three plus a, three tenths plus a one tenth is four tenths. Now the only thing is, is I can simplify that. I excelled. If you enter four tenths and it says no and they tell you you got to simplify, then you just, sometimes they make you do every once in a while we find one and they make you simplify. But we want you to simplify anyway, okay? Because that's what you have to do for district and state tests and everything. So the tests we make, we want you to simplify. I can divide the top and the bottom by two. So I would have 15 and two fifths, okay? 
That was a lot of little steps. Let's see. But I want to show you. Well, I don't want to enter my entry. I don't want to show you one other thing. Uh, that's probably good enough for this problem. We got to go on the channels up. Okay. So I put a space between the 15 and the fraction, and they're all positives. So my answer is going to be positive. Okay. Excellente. Pirates don't talk like that. Why do you look like a pirate, sir? Watch the beginning of the video. Skip level. Challenge level already. Okay. So let's see how hard it's going to be. Oh my gosh. Really? Okay. So guys, this is the different sign rule. I have a negative situation going on here. It's either plus a negative or minus a positive. Either way, it's a negative situation. Okay, this over here is a positive situation. So it's a different sign rule. I've got to subtract and find the difference between the two. So if I want to find the difference, you take the biggest digits minus the smallest digit. Don't worry about the negative symbol yet. I'm finding the difference. And there's gonna be 0.45 left. But now, change color. Okay, which digit is bigger, 27 or 27 and a little more part, 0.45? Yeah, this is the bigger digit and it's a negative situation. So my answer has to be negative, okay? Um, I believe you can put negative 0.45 or you can put negative 0 0.45. A lot of people like to write the zero in there. Let's see, negative 0 0.45. They may say I had to put negative 0.45. I'm pretty sure they count the zeros in the front. It's been a couple months since I've been on Excel, had the summer off and done a lot during the summer, okay. We moved right to the end of the school year because our last child was going to college, so we went downsize and saved money, okay? Then we taught math camp. Then we started unpacking. Then we packed our daughter to take her to college in Ohio. And while we were there, there was a flood, and we lost a lot of our stuff. So then we had to come back. We'd been there for one month. We had to come back and move again, and still unpacking our trash bag luggage. <laughs> because uh, we had to, in the midst of a flood, grab what we could save and, and, and bring them. So a lot of unpacking while teacher training was going on for two weeks and then start school. So I think I'm down to two trash bags left to unpack, uh, but there's still a lot to be done. So why did I bring that up? Because life gets busy sometimes, guys. You guys always are talking about how busy you are. Now you got things in your life by choice and things you're supposed to do, and you want to keep the things you have by choice to have a balanced life and be happy, I understand. And I extended the deadlines on these IXLs today because I heard um, there's a lot of homework in the other classes. All right, so anyway, let's see. Negative 0 0.45. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no, this is a new question. I said that because it's been a couple months since I've been on IXL, and I couldn't remember if they accepted that 0 in front. Okay, so that was challengeable. Here's another one. I have a negative, and I have a double negative. What happens to double negative? It changes to a plus. Okay, it looks like a giant plus sign if they had the parentheses there. Okay, or you just need to remember, do the opposite of negative or don't subtract. You know, however you want to say it, a double negative becomes a positive. So it's going to be different sign rule. We have a negative situation and this is not going to be a positive situation. It's different sign rule, so we want to find the difference. Take the biggest digit. And we want to subtract the smaller digit, okay? Oh, well, I don't have any fraction up above to subtract from. So what we did on the last problem, we have to borrow from that. We're going to have 77 and 2 halves. Now you can see that 2 halves really equals 1. And if I add that 1 to the 77, I get 78. So all I did was move that there so I could subtract the 1 half, okay? So now... Um, two halves minus one half equals one half. And then seven minus two is five, seven minus two is five. So that's my digit answer, but now I need to come back over here, change colors. Which digit is greater? 78 is greater than 22. So because it's greater, its symbol wins. I have more negatives than positives, guys. The 22 is really a positive because negative and a minus together, minus the negative, it double negative means plus, okay? Addition. So it's gonna be negative 55 and a half, okay? 
Now, one thing I did notice last year on Excel, if they give you fractions, don't answer in decimal. They want me to answer in fractions. Okay, I did notice that. Unless they changed it this year and they went in and reprogrammed. If they give you fractions, they want you to answer in fractions. If they give you decimals, they want you to answer in decimals. If they ever gave us problem mixed with fractions and decimals, they should accept either or, unless they specifically tell you in the question, what would the decimal answer be, okay? But here, I got fractions, so I'm gonna answer in fractions. So I'm gonna put negative 55 space one half. Okay, negative 55 and a half. Brilliant, okay? So there you go, guys. Um, that's adding and subtracting decimals and fractions, both positive and negative ones. But also we included a little bit of borrowing fractions from a whole number. Just like on this one, um, this is actually same sign rule because I have a negative situation and a negative situation. So it's just going to be more negative. So on this one, you could just add the 58 to the 67 and you're still going to have the 9 tenths. Now, if this was positive and a minus, if it was different situations, okay, what we just did a couple problems of is we have to borrow from this um, 67. We would change it to 66. Let me just show you. If, and then we're done. If it was um, 67 minus 58 and 9 tenths, okay? Uh, hold on, this guy's in the way. You guys, I don't think you can see my other toolbar. I have a little thing that says stop recording. Okay. Um, I was going to put it below 58 and 9 tenths. Okay. We need to borrow from this 7. Okay. So it's going to be 66 and 10 tenths. And that 10 over 10 equals 1. I can add the 1 back to the 66, and it's still a value of 67. I haven't changed the value. I've just created where I can borrow so I can subtract this fraction. So 10 tenths minus 9 tenths is going to be 1 tenth. And then 6 minus 8, I can't do. i got to borrow. So that 6 becomes a 5. 16 minus 8 is 8. And then 5 minus 5 is 0. Okay. So if, if this were the problem, you would borrow from it and you would get 8 tenths. That's not what the problem is. It's the same sign rule, so you're just going to add. So since I've done that, I'll already um, do it. So they're both negative situations. So you add them and keep the same sign. 8 plus 7 is 15. 6 plus 6 is 12. So I get 125 and 9 tenths. And they are both negative. Negative situation negative situation. So therefore, I have to have a negative answer. Negative one, two, fiver, space, nine slash 10. Okay. All right, guys. Good to see you. Stop sharing. Have a wonderful day. Good luck with your math. Um, pirate joke, maybe next time. Um, I'll add little dad jokes and silliness a little more in the future, like tell a couple of jokes or something to go along with whatever theme, but um, math fatigue, even for math teachers, it's been a lot of technology and a lot of videos and a lot of math. Guys, just persevere, okay? Just like us teachers, persevere. There'll be less homework per day as we're showing that you're doing what you're supposed to do and you perform well on tests and assessments, then we'll be like, okay, now we can do two or three nights a week homework instead of four or five nights a week homework, okay? Right now, we're continually trying to reinforce what we just learned. Uh, uh, so hang in there. Hang in there. You got this.